Hello and welcome to another Player 2 review discussion. Today I'm talking about AEW Fight Forever. Joining me is the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Betson from the Pop Culturist podcast, uh, website rather. Um, Ryan, what have you been thinking about AEW Fight Forever? Well, let me first get something. I've got, I've got some of the attire down. I've got the branded merch on. Yeah, if you're going to talk it, we... Oh, we have to get a belt in there as well. It's I bought it for my son and he loves it, but it's it's not not very adult human size. But yeah, so we're here today. Talked about fight uh, AEW's fight forever. So we do the right thing. Thank you very much for play on uh, from play on uh, Australia for providing both yourself, Sean, and yeah. me a, a review copy. Uh, so which is dope. Uh, we, do we bury the lead? Talk about like what AEW is for those that may not know. Uh, yeah. Um, well. You you've been following from the beginning. I was I, I was a late bloomer. Yeah. So do you want to do you want to give the early bits and then I'll, I'll throw in there some of the bits that I've I've come into. Yeah, certainly. So AEW is the all elite wrestling. It's a one of these essentially the second biggest wrestling company in the world behind the WWE. It was it was created in 2018 by uh, the team of Cody Rhodes, who everyone will know now from. WWE, uh, the Young Bucks, Hangman Adam Page, uh, the, all the elite, they came together to create a new promotion with the idea of, well, let's showcase the world, the different form of wrestling that WWE are not willing to do. And from there, they had their first ever pay-per-view, uh, which was uh, All In, which was the idea of let's put 10,000 people in a stadium. So we just brought every independent, any independent that wasn't WWE was welcome to come to the table. Uh, and then shortly after that, they did Double or Nothing and then Dynamite, which was their TV show. And that was like, what, 2018, 2019? And then now yeah. like just leaps and bounds so far so much so that they've been able to release their first ever uh video game last week at the time of recording yes um yeah i i came into them a bit later um as anybody who's a wrestling fan might would know uh cm punk made his return to professional wrestling um it was at that point that aew popped up on my radar so i'm like oh what's this since then i've been watching it week to week just loving the the types of characters that you're getting uh and just the talent it, it, it truly is something that you don't see in wwe these days um they, they've got their very much their standard look for wwe and here that just gets thrown out the window um bunch of ex wwe guys but also a bunch of independents that have never been on that stage and yeah they they're killing it i'm now watching week to week um, watching the pay-per-views, e everything that I can. Well, even like the idea of AEW was we're going to do it differently, which is the exact same approach that they've actually bought into AEW Fight Forever. So with WWE and working under the 2K brand, uh, they they sort of go the more hardcore simulation almost where yep. here aw fight forever they've, they've brought in games of old they're like well we wanted to make like w wwf no mercy but now so they've yep. really gone the super arcadey approach they're not taking themselves too seriously within the game like mini games how it looks how it plays how ev everything about it is a little bit just the opposite once again mm. which is which is lovely that they've been able to extend that brand philosophy uh yeah. in into this into this video game product too like this is this is definitely a game you can sit down with a couple of people on the couch and just play multiple rounds in a night just go and, yep. and it, it's very much the couch co-op uh, well, couch competitive you know yeah. just wailing on each other um and and they've really gone over the top in some areas as well. Like obviously, um, WWE is very much PG thirteen. It's uh, it's it doesn't have blood unless you know it's very very rare and, and then instances. In the in the WWE games, the most blood you're going to get, the most color, is probably like a little bit on that forehead if you kind of yep. bump him in or something. Yeah, where, you throw him so, into the steel cage. I, I myself <laughs> like I, I I talk about it all the time. I work for a number of different wrestling independent wrestling promotions here in Victoria. With one of them being a company called Deathmatch Down Under, which is Deathmatch, right? Yes. So it's like if traditional wrestling is is theater, this is the gladiatorial combat. It's theater <laughs> plus. So be able to have a game that lets me kind of enjoy the Deathmatch world that I love to work in here. Yeah. 
like not quite the same because I'm used to like light tubes and chairs and gusset plates and all this nonsense. But like to be able to have the exploding barbed wire death match, be able to have <laughs> you know a lights out match where I can like use anything and bang people until they like get bloody and wrecked. Like it's a whole different experience and it makes it very happy. Like for like me I, personally, the the first weapon that I pulled out. I mean, like it, it's funny because I having played WWE games in the past, I've gone to, you know, you, you, all the weapons are located under the ring. So I've gone there and I'm like, hang on, which, which button is going to do it? I didn't realize, I don't know why they've done it, but all the weapons are located in the crowd around the outside. Mm -hmm. So um, what they, they've done this mix of like just dropping it, like because using that arcadey approach, it's like, and they're everywhere, and they just drop around. There's one over there, there's one over there, and if you pull out from under the ring, it's going to be random, uh, no. which I found because like there's one oh, one okay. here, like I pulled out, and like I get like a witch's hat, and then you can plonk it on someone's head and punch them until it falls off, and it's you know little silly ones I found. Like it wasn't you weren't able to go in there and pick, but it may just be in the mode that I was playing. Yeah. Um... Yeah, most of the time when I've found them, it's been like reaching into the crowds. Um, ah. like the first the first one that I pulled out was actually the uh, broom covered in barbed wire. Nice. And I'm there, I'm trying to attack, and my guy's just like trying to sweep the ring. And I'm like, this is doing <laughs> nothing. What What is going on? It was only when I found out later, it's it's when someone's lying on the ground, you sweep their face and, you know, and then the claret comes out and the color is there. But um, But yeah, no, when you pick up, um, the the bat with nails sticking out of it. It's like, yeah, okay, this is this is the violence. Yeah, this is the this is the the as you said the the gladiatorial combat style. Um, but I do want to throw a special shout out to the gas bottles that you can pick up and throw. Yeah, <laughs> I thought, okay, this is just gonna clang the dude in the head. Next thing, it explodes, and both of us are on the floor. And I'm like, how does that help me? Yep, like it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well i feel like we're just like like throwing a bunch of things that we're really enjoying about the game but like, let's break down into its parts because you All mentioned right. that one of the big things is is that couch competitive right so yes pick up and play attitude so yep. a big part of what they've done here is they have gone into more into the the arcade approach so it's not about holding you know a, a weird intricate number of buttons you can press very similar to wwe it's like yeah. let's just go yeah. um you've got which, you've got a punch you've got a kick you've got a grapple yeah, that's that's all you really need. Yeah, and then, so they they've also rather than bringing in like a health meter per se, they've implemented the like a mo the momentum, momentum meter from back yeah. in the day. So it's rather than you know like oh you're getting beaten, it's all about the more the better you do, the more momentum you get, and that exactly. also builds up your special, which then allows you to do those signature moves or those finishes. Now I want to compliment finishers while while we're here because finishers in this game actually do finishing. Yes. Where yeah. like in WWE or even WWE in general, you can unload like sixteen finishes on someone and then still lose. But yeah, here, they'll, they'll just get back up and yeah. And if you pop it. that finisher here, you're gonna you're gonna win. Oh yeah, in like a it, nice way. Well, the only time you don't win is if you're if you make the rookie error, you try to pin him and you're too close and they get a rope break. Yeah, that's or someone interferes. That's the only time that people will kick out. Yeah, um, you need that ring awareness, you know. Yeah, exactly. You got to make sure to drag him, drag him into the middle. Um, but I do find it weird that you can you you unlock the signature and you can pop that, but then you got to stop and taunt someone before it'll it'll unlock the the finisher for you. Well, yeah. So that like that's actually a weirdly common thing in independent wrestling is like telegraphing when you're about to do your shit. So like uh, one of the big things is especially in like a, like a lot of indie scenes, it's like you know they'll go like we yeah, brain. Buster, and I was like, "Woo, brain buster!" Like you kind of <laughs> know it's coming, which is the yeah. big thing. And I guess I kind of like that idea because it, it's it sets up that moment. Because especially yeah. when you're watching in a lot, watching wrestling live, which is very different to televised um, yeah. wrestling, is that there is a lot of that communication with the crowd. So to have that moment, we kind of like you know, you get the crowd going, and everyone's like, "Oh shit, it's about to go down." Mm. And and that and that works when you've got say when you bust out Kenny Omega's taunt where he does the gun thing and you're like okay, the big cool. old like you know yeah and it's like all right here here comes the V trigger I'm just, I'm um, just marking out right now this is fantastic and um and and you know that works but when like I mean for instance I was playing as Sammy Guevara mm. and it's like oh I do a taunt and I just spin around in a circle and it's like okay now I can do my finishing move. 
Um, some of them, like in those situations where it does telegraph, it works really well. Mm. Others, it just feels like, why do I need to do this extra step? You know, especially if you've already hit the signature move, it's like, boom, you're pumped up, ready to go. It's only a little thing and it could just be my personal proclivities. Yeah. I, I um, think that I think where it doesn't work here, because those little taunts are a great way for once again in in wrestling to yeah. present your character, right? To yeah. present those little subtle details about who you are. So for Sammy, like as an example, that like spin is kind of him just being the little like, you know, nuisance that he is, right? <laughs> like it's about him just like being a prick. Yeah. So with like Kenny, like that, you know, like if, if you've watched like coming from the new J Japan style of wrestling where mm. there is that language barrier, it's a lot of pantomime, right? So like yeah. those little extra movements indicate something different. But the problem that Fight Forever that does have is whether it's very limited roster, weirdly enough, there's a lot of animations that are either shared, moves that are shared, signatures mm. that are shared that don't actually line up with who they are as their wrestling character. So yep. there are times where you'll be like, okay, like yeah, like the like the big ones, obviously, like your Jericho's, your CM Punk's, your Kenny's, etc. Like the ones that are the most pr prominent AEW yeah. wrestlers that have those very defined, unique characters. Like they got that little bit of extra care. Like your Adam Cole getting to your Adam Cole baby, you know, like yeah. little yep. shit like that. For like, if you are a fan, you're gonna have a good time. Mm. But when you start getting into weirdly like the lower echelon of characters, which is weird because there's only not that many to choose from anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's a weird choice to have them do that. And especially mm. knowing that like Ukes, the sort of company that, that has made this game, that has, that has developed it, ha have a long legacy in wrestling games. Like up until WWE 2K20, about halfway through that, like they were the staple studio for WWE. So they know mm. how to make really higher quality games and then to come in here and make this in three years like i presumably from scratch but a lot of it is influenced from that older way of doing it so it's not super from scratch yeah it is disappointing to sort of have it see these minor shortfalls i like i won't say minor but they they, they are shortfalls right there are little Definitely. things that you just wouldn't see over there yeah yep now, granted, well, it, it is the first of its ones, so presumably it's going to be better. Or if they're going to news it as the name suggests, fight forever. Like this is going to become like a an on games as a service, like an ongoing platform, and they, mm. you won't get a fight forever more. Like you'll just get this plus. Or they'll 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 build on this for a while while they refine. Then boom, full yeah. release. The next one is you know got all the bells and whistles, and is the ducks nuts, and you know an uber refined version of this. Um. But yeah, as, as you were talking about the, the shortcomings with Yukes and stuff, like looking at the even the character models, some of them are really well done. Yeah. Others just like the, the Sammy Guevara model, he looks like he's 16 years old. And I mean, the dude looks young anyway, but it looks like you, you're wrestling with a teenager. And um, But the I'm interesting thing say... is it's the inconsistency of it as well. Like, for example, Cody Rhodes looks like shit in the mm. menu get him in the game he looks fantastic like ah. the like that side model looks like really super weird but the second yeah. you get him in that like greater pose or into the game itself in the playable space like he looks fantastic he looks exactly like Cody Rhodes yeah so like it's 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 weird that there's some discrepancies like Adam Cole looks fantastic mm. where there's uh, others that don't Brit Brit Baker yeah you you look at the the model that they're using in um in animations and cutscenes for hers and it's like oh my god what are they what have they done here um like yeah some of them really 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 well done others it's just sort of a oh hang on we didn't quite have enough time to finish this yeah um it, and like and that's certainly a point of concern like as in this game has so fun fact bit inside baseball so this game was originally meant to launch in 2022 Mm. Um, so thankfully with the people that I know, one of the big things we were trying to do last year is trying to find a way to get AEW involved in PAX Australia. Um, so there was a lot of communications around like, what do we want to do? Like, cause you know, obviously the promote, one of the, one of the, uh, the four promotions that I work for is like <laughs> a pretty big one in the company in Australia. Right. So they do have a lot of connections internationally. So like, well, how do we get them over here to do this? And eventually it fell through because the game simply wasn't ready. 
Mm. So like I mean, like this was around the time it was playable at Gamescom last year, but that was really behind closed doors. So it wasn't really available to the public in, in the way it would need to be for PAX Oz. So like even then, which was oh you know, PAX Oz was October of last year, and now we're sitting here in June. So six you know, six, eight months later. Yeah. Like granted, COVID in that time, and as a res- you know, mm. COVID's a whole string of challenges on the on a development cycle. But I feel like it should have been further along. It should it should be looking better. It should be playing better because I am getting some like some challenges as well. Like, mm. and it's, if you're on a, if you're having a ladder match and you get punched when you're up top, you just fall through the ladder and then you fall into the mat. And a oh. like, couple of like glitch shots like that. Most of the time not really a problem but yep. there are some things that just it clearly couldn't have been held on too longer mm. it had to get out because yep. even if we, we haven't touched upon it yet but we look at like road to the elite which is their campaign you know we were discussing a little bit before we started recording but the the time that that game covers is a couple of years ago like we're Ooh. in 2023 right now and they're touching story points from like 20 and even the roster itself, like the roster that they're using, it's a mix. It's, it's they a were a huge mix. Yeah, it's like these are people that were prominent in the beginning of AEW. Like there's uh, Yuka Sakazaki, who doesn't even wrestle there anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. Like she's not even around. Like I haven't seen her on on well, AEW TV in like two years. But Abaddon. she's yeah. Well, Abaddon was great in Dark. She's got a cool gimmick, so it's, it makes total sense to put her in there. Like because she looks like standoffish. But you've got Jamie Hayter, mm. the current AEW Women's Champion, isn't in the game. Mm. You know what I mean? Not as FTR. They've been a major FTR are in there for the now. last couple of years. They're in there now. So if you pick up the season pass, it's, it's the first day. It's the day one ah, DLC. So yep. you get the Matt Hardy and you get FTR. So like I, because you know, they play on provided me just the standard edition. So yeah. the second that became available, I'm like season pass, give me that FTR. So like yeah. I, I bought it and brought it in, and then put the t- the back the, t- the title on the right person. But you know, um, and even to to go with that, like the the the, the women's belt is incorrect. It's the old one. It's not Ooh. the new women's title. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got the FTW belt in there, which is currently in the hands of Hook. Hook is an incredibly po- incredibly popular wrestler. He's yep. not in there. Like, yeah. if you look at some of the hottest wrestling talent currently, as we speak on TV, mm. you've got, like, where's the acclaim? Their music is here. Where are they? Yeah. Right? There's, there's, like, there's only three, four tag teams. And on top of that, like... Where's your trip? You, you, you know your your trios built. Yeah, well, I mean the trios are still you know uh, relatively new timeline speaking. Like, I mean they come they would have come in pretty late in the development of the game already. But there's no um, need like AEW has like prided itself on its tag team wrestling, whether it be two with two man tags or three man tags, right? So mm-hmm. that's that's been their staple and like one of the things that's defined them against the WWE like as a company. So to have less tag teams here and to then also be missing the trio, like I understand the trios is tougher because you you need to have a big roster to start, yeah. to make those trios belts worthwhile. But, you know, like where's your tags? Mm. Like, you know, like even, even if a team that's not even connected anymore, where's like swerving our glory? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or um, uh, top flight. Top flight, yeah, like, like you know, they've they been around be for a awesome. while now. Granted, yeah. Darius, uh, not Darius, the other one has been injured for uh, a while. Dante, he's uh, yeah, that oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, sorry, Darius is the, is the, his brother, Dante. Oh no, Dante got wait, hurt. Dante, getting, wait, one of, them, well one of them got back, and the other one then got injured. So yeah, Darius came back, Dante got hurt. But it, yeah, he got his leg snapped. You know what I mean? Like, there's like, there's all these little things. Like, I know like Dan Housen's coming, but that once again, very similar to Abaddon. He's not mm. on TV a lot, but he's a good gimmick wrestler. So he's exactly. fun to be a character to be put into the game. Mm. And it makes me wonder because I know we're just like I'm trying. There is a tangent here, but there is a through there is a thread because if you look at the short the the small list of available wrestlers to use, and then you look over at the custom creator suite. And you see how limited it is. Yeah. It kind of makes you go, is it limited? Because like that's why the roster is limited because they didn't have enough assets, I guess, for lack of a better term, to make the custom wrestler mm. full. 
Well, I mean, part of, uh, as you mentioned earlier, you know, these guys made the WWE games and whatever, and they would have just been reusing assets constantly and constantly, yep. but they probably don't have access to those assets anymore. No, no. So, so, so they're making everything context, from scratch. Like w, so, w, the production of WWE 2K20 did um, get kind of ruck, wrecked when Ukes kind of gave them the bird and left <laughs> midway through production. So they did have to start completely fresh. Mm. And obviously this is this is excluding any pre-production time. So when we say, oh, it's been three, four years, like that is excluding pre-production time, which they would have 100% had to account for. Yeah. So it's really probably three years of active development compared to four. Um, mm. But even then, like, depend, like Ukes isn't a small team. It's not a big team either, but it's not a small team. And when you've got decades of, of wrestling creation system now, uh, so wrestling, you know, wrestling ex game experience. And then on top of that, you're, you know, you're going back to an older style that isn't as high fidelity. Yeah. Like if you look at the photo realism of WWE 2K23 and you look at fight forever, yeah, you don't have to go as hard. Yeah, exactly. Now that's coming from, I have no idea how development work so that's just that's just <laughs> me with expectations i guess like now i should also mention and i'm sure you're the same sean is that the game's not bad no no i I've, I've i've had a lot of fun playing it um definitely have a lot of fun playing it there's just these are little things and i suppose it's because it, we're probably picking up this stuff and it's sticking out so much because for so long you had that wwe brand and for all its faults, it had, up until where it really started to fall off badly, it had, like, a set standard, and it came with all these features. So you're used to having, you know, hundreds of moves to choose from. You're used to having, you know, 50 to 60 face templates mm. to choose from for your character. So people are coming into this game expecting that to be the standard. Um, and, and that's where, like, you know, it, that, that's where this... This it's putting this stuff into context of where we're coming from from that. Yeah, because like, like granted, like Fight Forever is missing the likes of your GM mode. You know, you like like all the additional modes that like WWE has that keeps them different. Like whether it be uh, my um, my rise is their campaign or what's their card mode. I don't know. I haven't played whatever their card moves. Years, so. <laughs> it doesn't escape me. But um, you know, like it's missing all the fluff, all the extras, right? So it mm. is kind of a. It's a lot. Like it is more bare bones. Like it's just yep. campaign exhibition matches. You know, and there's a little bit of online. The create so the creation suite's minimal. Like as you yep. said, like there's eight faces, and you can't fuck with them. It's yeah. just eight <laughs> faces. Right, a handful of hairstyles, very limited clothes options. But apparently, there's like 17 fucking camo designs, but like two t-shirts, yeah, you know that aren't branded, right? So it's it's a really weird. You, you can balance. buy about you can buy four different body paints from the shop with the in-game in-game yeah. money. So, you no, know, just like, to, I, all <laughs> I hope there's more coming, but hmm. that's an expect like that is giving the benefit of the doubt and. Welcome to a review. Your review has is not yeah. what it could be. Yep. And then it's it, it also comes down to oh, is this stuff going to be available? But as a microtransaction, or will it just be chucked in there as part of an update down the track? You know, mm. it, it, it's just all up in the air. We don't know whether this is all we're getting or whether it will be expanded upon at the moment. Yeah, and like it, I I would hope that it is, and like you know. Even something simple as the as season pass, and like, hey, we do have some more coming. Like, mm. cool, great. But as you said, that's microtransactions, right? This is not, you know, your. Because I guess one of the big questions is, is this game worth a hundred bucks? Mm. And you know, the the advantage that both you and I have is we are in this incredibly privileged position where we can go, well, we didn't pay for it. And yeah. like, that's not me going, hey, that's just me going, well, that's a thing we have to consider. So yeah. like, if, if you were to ask me, like, would you pay a hundred bucks for this? Would you pay 120 bucks for this to get the, to get the elite edition? Well, I kind of did. I paid what I thought it was, you know, what I would be comfortable. I bought the season pass it was 45 mm. bucks, whatever. Right. And so like, it's not as if I'm not, if I, I'm not willing to put money down for this game because yeah. I am and I yeah. have. 
but like if you're forking out 120 bucks for this you're probably yeah. gonna be a little bit he- a little bit hesitant but or, or you're gonna be a, i think a little bit disappointed with what you're getting straight out of the box yeah yeah but once again like it, it when you, you do it is like it's fair to have that understanding of it will get better in time like mm. how many games but that's such a greater problem within the games industry at the moment that oh we just got to wait for it to get better like yeah. no because even like if they're talking about wf no mercy on 64 that game released once uh, it yeah. couldn't be patched it couldn't be updated and like everyone regards it as one of the greatest wrestling games ever made so if you want to be in that lineage like kind of have it out the gate yeah. but look once again the naive the naive side of me going i don't know how games work I just play them, review them, discuss about them, and I was like wrestling. So <laughs> yeah, look, one of the things I did enjoy, like despite the length of it, which uh, overall was pretty quite short, was um, the Road to Elite mode. Mm. Um, now, primarily, one of the bits that I really enjoyed was, as I as I mentioned, I came into this a bit late. I came in, I ca- I, I started watching AEW after CM Punk appeared, so I didn't see any of the early stuff. I've I'd read about it afterwards and everything, but I never saw any of it. Now, as you're playing through it, you get um, video clips, historic yeah. videos. You know, so you when you first start the story mode, you get the video presentation of. Um, Matt and Nick Jackson, you know, announcing what they're doing, you know, and you you see the beginning of um, AEW. And then as you progress through, it depends on what story bits you get. Um, I I, I think, like, obviously, it depends on how you do in your matches as to what... Like, for example, the first match that I've done... Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of a second playthrough and the first match has been the Casino Battle Royale for me. Mm. The first one, it was literally, I was just fired up the game. I'm like, cool, story mode. Jumped in, had not played, had no idea what I was doing, didn't even know how to change targets. Um, which, as a quick aside, the game could explain a few things a little bit better. It could. Um, I would highly like recommend that, going to the settings <laughs> and putting on manual targeting. Yeah, um, doing that, uh, like that, and using R1 to pick your opponent up from the ground. I stumbled on that after about 10 matches, I think, yeah. before I realized I could do that. But anyway, um, so yeah, so first time I played, I obviously I lost the Battle Royale. And it took me in one direction. The second time, I won it, and it took me on to wrestle, um, wrestle for the championship for the inaugural championship. Double or nothing. Which we know, um, yeah, which we know was Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. But because I'd won that battle royale, boom, I got to go in and um, wrestle for that. So. Excuse me, the dinner I scoffed down before this call is. uh, trying to come back up um but yeah so then you know i got two different experiences and i got to see like the first time i went down my side path and i saw you know um uh the exalted one Brody lee when he won the tnt championship and um it was actually funny watching the way he treated john silver back then when when the dark order was at its peak compared to how john silver is now side note there's compilations on YouTube of just Brody Lee and the Dark Order, and it's the funniest shit <laughs> you'll ever see. Like it's so good. Like it. So I don't just go check it out. It's fun. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, like Brody Lee is most definitely missed. Like without a doubt. Oh, definitely. And you can see, like they they really um they 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 really wanted to make sure that he was a part of this story mode because he was a big part of. AEW in its infancy. Um, but yeah, just so I got to see these video video visionettes of this stuff that I missed. Mm. And, you know, it, it sort of really helped bring me up to, gave me more context to things and whatever. So like playing through is definitely something that I recommend. Yes, it is short, but it also gives you a bit more backstory into the company itself and the characters and stuff. And I'm, I'm really interested interested to see just what I'll find as I keep going through in the different storylines. 
Yeah, um, and like, like admittedly, I haven't finished the campaign yet, so uh, I was playing it, and then, side note, like I got to, I, I got a phone call from my current job, and they're like, how quickly can you get to Sydney? And then I flew to Sydney in like two hours on a Tuesday. I was like, I had a meeting, and then I went, oh shit, not gonna go. And next thing you know, I'm in Sydney for work. So like, what was supposed to be my week of playing AEW, I couldn't take my console with me like i did the first like the other time so like i haven't dicked about in it as much but like in terms of the campaign as you mentioned like it's cool because it, it does it's a very like an rpg light in a lot mm. of ways pardon me so like they've so aw like they have quarterly pay-per-views right once every four months yep they've reduced that time here to have like you kind of monthly in that yeah. it's four shows four dynamites then an AEW, then a pay-per-view and in that time, like when you go to a town, you're like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to eat to refill your energy? You want to go to the gym to work on your skill points? Do you want to, you know, go meet and greet to build your morale? And, but you start, you know, using these little like micro decisions to build on that, which allows you to kind of shape the character, whether it be your custom character or in or a pre-made one, mm. um, sort of go that. Then you get to experience like what would happen if Eddie Kingston was the took on Chris Jericho for the world championship, like, you know, <laughs> first ever world championship match. Like personally, I've been fucking fantastic. But like, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a little fun that way, and especially yeah. if, if it does have some sort of tangents. Now it's also curious to see like how deep are those tangents? Like, mm. are they like Detroit become human level, or it's just like you win, you lose? You yeah, know? I think it's I think it's very much like you, you win, you lose. Like my first, as I was saying, my first one, I bombed out in the battle royale, and then it started me on this story. The person, like of, who um, who'd you take on? Who was your first feud in the campaign when you lost? Um, I ended up tag teaming with Dustin Rhodes. Ah, so um, I tagged with uh with Christian Cage because ah. he was one of the first people that I eliminated. I I don't remember if Dustin was one of the first that I eliminated. Mm. I was still trying to let's just be like, what am I doing? What I am just I doing? winged it. I was like, what? Yeah. And then next thing you know, someone's over the road. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, I, can't, I, I uh, eliminated someone. I got no idea how I did it, but I eliminated. Um, but then, yeah, um, we had a, we actually had a match for the champions, championships. And against my better judgment, I tagged out. I let Dustin get in. Mm. No, never. Maybe the natural, never but he's that. old, man. Just the the. I'm oh, sorry. Who are you playing in the campaign? By the way, your custom. I was or? I was using uh, Sammy Guevara for that first one. Okay. So I went I with someone. It, yeah, I think it's someone who I know. I know their, their what their signature is going to be. You know their move set or and whatever. And um. Yeah, I really shouldn't have tagged out with him because he just within uh, within like. 60 seconds he was boom getting pinned i'm like checking out my phone for a second all of a sudden one two oh shit three boom done oh well okay i thought he'd last a little bit longer than that <laughs> so but yeah um oh look one thing i want to put out there right um i only noticed it once like we've talked about you know sort of what seems like you, you, with the models and stuff, how it's kind of iffy and, and all of that stuff. There was one thing I noticed in that first battle royale that I was in, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what makes me think, it, it, it confuses me a little bit because it shows that there's, there's thought and, and there was love there, is that because you obviously, as you know, you get a very abbreviated version of the entrances. You'll either get a little bit as they're sort of walking in or whatever. Like, it's really abbreviated. I don't know why, um, especially because they've got the Titan Tron videos there playing, but you just, you don't get to see them. You don't get to see the whole entrances. Um, but when Jungle Boy is coming in the Battle Royale, there's a bunch of the crowd that you can see doing the arm wave motion mm. that, the, that the live crowds do for his song. Before he turned heel this week. Well, yeah, before he turned heel. <laughs> and and then tried to get him to, you know, do that, you know, after he socked Hook. Um, but, yeah, like, it's just it's just a little thing that was put in there and just to see that. But then I've only seen it in that Battle Royale. I only saw it in that Battle Royale because 
it was as he was running down the ramp and I could see mm. parts of the crowd. Um, now I haven't had, I haven't, I must admit, I haven't had a match with Jungle Boy or playing as Jungle Boy. So I don't know if you will see more of that when you, um, when you play as him. Mm-hmm. But it was it was just just one of those little things that just shows okay boom you know that's 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 the universe of AEW that's what you get from a live crowd in AEW, which is kind of like which, uh, which explains to me like if they're doing these abbreviated int- entrances like maybe that's why they don't have the acclaimed right because the acclaimed mm. you know like they like the big part of what they do is their entrance where they. You know, they they make the little you know little quips the as they walk down, a live yeah. rap, and then followed by the finger blasting. You know, mm. um, I saw you. Sorry, fun fact: we got uh, old Paul James producing here. Said finger blasting, and he went, "Oh, hang on, what's going on over here?" <laughs> so maybe that's what will get him into wrestling. Who knows? Yeah, I I reckon it'll be the scissoring. Yeah, yeah, the scissoring yeah. is what'll get him into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, so, but yeah. But, you know, um, it's, a, it's a good point, because, like, that was one thing that it really kind of caught me off guard, actually, was the shortened entrances. Because mm. even when you go and create your own customer, it's like, oh, cool, the entrance is, like, t- four seconds long. And you can, like, dick with pyro and stuff. That's pretty fun. Like, yeah. you can create custom pyro in your entrance. But what's, um, what's funny is I was playing an online match earlier, and somebody had, like, those custom pyro things. I can see the controls on the, for them. Yeah. When like I don't have any set for mine, so when my guy comes out, it's just the blank screen. But when they come out, I can see the options for their pyro. Can you pick them and or could I can't pick them, but I can see them like mashing, you know, the the shooting shooting pyro, you know, the fireworks and whatever. Yeah. It's just weird that you know, yeah, it's there. Like I can get it if it's your own and you want to set it off and stuff. But why do I need to see you? Just you're just ruining the effect for me. Yeah, a little bit, because like I think you can toggle that on or off if you so choose, which is interesting because like why if they've got it toggled on, why should you be seeing it? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Are there any other beats we haven't hit yet? Uh like apart like I guess one of the things is the match types is limited. As I said, it's you know, one one on one, two on two, three on three, uh, you know, like one so yeah. one on one, two on two, three way, four way. The battle royal, the exploding barbed wire death match. And the they ladder. have a ladder, which is the, for the poker chip. Um, yep. Then you've got a lights out match, which is essentially a no rules, no disqualification match. Yeah, like the weapons. You, that's yeah. that's about it, isn't it? Uh, I think there's one more in the one on one, but yeah. Oh, and the one of the things I want to credit the game on though, completely yep. intergender matches. Yes, one of the best fucking things about independent wrestling is intergender matches because the joys of wrestling is it's predetermined it's scripted so you can tell great stories that have Mm. men women or however whatever gender they choose to be able to get into the ring together and it doubles it triples your amount of stories that you can tell when yep. you've got like really the ass backwards like WWE format of no no men can only fight men and women can only fight women and and if you're in a mixed tag match and one of them happen to tag you you must swap because there's no possible chance that you know so mm. we're here able to have a game you're like you know what I want Jade Cargill fucking murdering Jungle Boy like you can do it <laughs> you're like I you know I want Thunder Rosa to choke out you know uh, <laughs> choke out Darby Allen yeah. sweet I want Adam Cole to fight his in real life wife. Uh, Britt Baker, DMD. That's what married? I want to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not married, but I know some, no, they're certainly well, they're together. together. They've been yeah. together for a while. Right. Good. No, no, you just you tripped me out there. I'm like, you mean, like, that's the shit I want to see. Yes. And you like, want to see him the, beat her up. I want to see them scuffle because that's yeah. fun. Because, like, yeah. you know, I, once again, I've helped pitch stories for like wrestling, and one of them was like, that's fucking, like, you used to, you're, you're dating in real life. That's have you, you know, you be the one that cost this person the title opportunity and that builds a feud and then we'll, t- and we'll skirt that kayfabe line and you'll break up on socials and do da 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 yeah. And like, that's fucking fun. <laughs> you know? 
when that starts is a little detail that I think absolutely fantastic. But like, there's no steel mm. cage matches. Yeah. Um. You know, like granted, there's like uh, blood and guts, which is their version of war games. I'd make sense why it wouldn't be here because that's a lot. Once again, yes. there's like that's two teams of like four on four or five on five, and that's they, that's, that's you know two thirds of your roster pretty much. Their roster is not equipped for yeah. any sort of multi man <laughs> match. I'm impressed yeah. they could do a casino battle royal with that many minimal wrestlers. Yeah. Um. You know, but. Look, it wasn't all I can hope is that it gets better. Like the scores that I've seen for it now, have you have you completed your review for player two? Um, I haven't yet. I, I've been honestly, I was waiting for it to go live with the general public so I could get some online matches. Um, I mean, so because... defensive, man. I don't give a shit. I'm with player two, it's fine. But I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, what, what's like, what score are you sort of put thinking about putting it in using the, the grading scale of player two? Oh, look, I, I'm looking sort of between C and B at the moment. Like, yeah. it has its issues. Like, it's it's great for what it is, but I don't think what it is deserves the price point that it's at at the moment. Yeah, and I would agree. Like, I think a C plus is probably that best space. Yeah. Like, B, I think if it was a little bit more, like the Ross was a bit bigger, the custom suite was a bit better, like, it's fine. Like, they, like my score doesn't take into account it looks janky because by them intentionally like throwing homage to a older way mm. of doing it. Yeah. Give me jank. Sweet. Yeah. Like give me mini games that are fucking weird. No, <laughs> except for the quiz one. That's really hard. Like, it's like, it's like the ninth degree of difficulty on like, Oof. who's, you know, which of these wrestlers were born in December. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but like, like having it look a little bit jank and like, I'm like, okay, I can work with that because that's the mm. style they're going for. Yeah. It, it's, like, it's, it's an intentional graphical choice. Yeah. But like the things that they are lacking, which should be, they, it's admittedly it is the standard in a wrestling mm. game. Like if you look over Fire World Pro, um, as a, as an example, which is the, which is the, the, essentially the new Japan equivalent, which is, that's a 2.5 D pixely game and that has more options in than this like no you know no one is like if anyone was legitimately expecting the wwe 2k suite of of Mm. options yeah you you, you like hell's wrong with you right you (laughs) and super kick too many times in the face um but like expecting a reasonable amount and once yeah. again one of the biggest problems that wwe has always had is because they have the annual release cycle you know, there was a time, I think it was, I think it was 2020, like this was prior to, uh, sorry, released in October 2019. And literally three weeks beforehand, they completely redesigned the sets for both Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> so the game was obsolete before it even released. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's not something that they that you'd normally see from them, though. Um, when they that, yeah, that was releases. like... The point I'm making with that yes. is we're already seeing that here as well. It's missing mm. belts. Where's the international championship, might I add? Yep. You yep. know what I mean? Like, there are missing a number of things here that had the game not been so behind in its development, mm. we could be there. But, like, you know, we're talking hopefully about the future of what this could be. If they're this behind, how behind are they going to be moving forward? Yep. So yeah, I think I think that somewhere between a C and a B or a C plus, I think is probably a very like apt uh, review score for me. Even though I don't really score games, but yeah. So, well, I think that just about covers it. For I think it does. Then we there's like then we may have covered near on every part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> now 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 I've got to try and put a, put into words something original that we haven't actually broached in this video. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll find something there, if, even if it's my own lack of skill at the game. Um, so cool. Well, thank you very much for joining. Um, anything thank you, you for wanna, having me. Anything you want to throw out there? Anything you want to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, The shameless uh, plugs? Yes, the shameless plugs. That's it. That's oh, it. that's super easy. So my shameless plug is come check out my weekly PlayStation podcast called For the Players, the pop culture PlayStation podcast. It releases every Monday morning at AM on your podcast services because if you're wanting like discussions around PlayStation and sneaking in there, all, all delivered in like a personality-filled show, that's us. That's what we do. And, uh, you know, 
once again, Paul, who's off camera, well, you know, uh, he's been there a number of times. He has sons of fun. <laughs> I'll do everything I can to try and make him the third host, but he's too busy, that damn bastard. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's where you can find me. If you want to, if you want to hear me talk about wrestling, come check me out on Twitter at, at Haggard MC, H-A-G-G-A-R-D-M-C. And if you're around uh, a, a Victorian independent wrestling, I'm sure you'll see me because I'm <laughs> there a lot. Yes. I'm literally, I'm literally off to do comms. Uh, commentary for uh, oh also there's no commentary in this in the game by the way also weird note Ooh, um yeah yeah because I'm off to do commentary for a wrestling show here in Victoria tomorrow so I'll be around oh nice um well yes I'm Sean um yeah everything that I do you can find on the Player Two channels uh and the website um nothing to really plug at the moment except for maybe this discussion vid so but yep yeah, uh, you've already watched it so thanks yeah, exactly so you, you, oh, you make awesome. me look better. <laughs> um yeah twitter at sean hub p2 um and yeah if you see see someone with a cr badly created wrestler on aew with that twitter handle you'll be going up against me please be gentle <laughs> so i think with that we'll say good night and uh hope everybody uh you know jumps in and gives it a chance because it is a fun little game when you for what it is it is. It's a good one. But of course, so only one once again, I love talking to the person behind the curtain. So scissor me, Daddy Padge! <laughs>